In the projects that I work on, I am rendering visible abstract structures and engaging with very new technologies to offer a poetic vision of the future. Hi, my name is Sarah Mayohas, and I am a conceptual artist and the creator of Bitchcoin. In 2015, I released this project as an artwork. At the time, there was only Bitcoin, and so as a conceptual artwork, I forked Bitcoin and created my own meme currency called Bitchcoin, and I backed it at a fixed rate by my artwork. 25 scrunches per coin forever. Those artworks were called Speculations, and it was created using two-way mirrors uh, that create this telescoping effect, uh, this mise en abîme, um, and included my body within, within the image. Bitcoin is the first example of fractionalizing and tokenizing art and putting it on a blockchain. It was released before Ethereum, making it an extremely historical piece of NFT art. Bitcoin was initially about my agency as a young female creator. It was about taking trends I was seeing and, and taking them to an extreme. People turning themselves into brands, the financialization of art, the potential of blockchain technology. The limit of that is Bitcoin, is the artist as currency. And this also presented the idea of a social token, of allowing fans to have a piece of me and to come along the, my artistic journey. Normally, artists are really limited by their geography. You're doing a show in one location and how many people are gonna come see it? But now, Bitcoin can be bought by people around the world who simply have an engagement with your work through the ideas and the visuals that they can just see online. And as I continue to make artworks, Bitcoin remains this seminal piece that has all of the elements that I continue to develop, which is a very feminine practice. Bitcoin is one of the very few feminine NFTs in a world that is still very male-oriented. An engagement with the forefront of technology, which I continue to do, whether that was AI or virtual reality or augmented reality, and an engagement with financial structures and how those can evolve. After Bitcoin, I again, I was really interested in our conceptions of value and the stock market is this amazing aggregator of information. It takes a wide reality and distills it to an exchange. And the exchange is, is a point that I find very interesting. Value doesn't exist unless exchange happens. When there is one in the place of the other, this is a substitution, which is an act of representation. Exchange is also a relationship between two people, which really ties my work to relational aesthetics. In stock performance, I looked at exchange in the context of the market. A very wide reality gets distilled to this point and this line. And obviously this is, a very, this is something that's very reductive and as a result the point and the line become a reality within themselves. So for that piece, every single day I traded a new stock with the purpose of manipulating the value. As soon as I had made the value change, I would go to a painting, a white painting, and very gesturally with oil stick, redraw that line, mirroring the way in the market I had inscribed my presence. That piece uh, obviously got a lot of attention because it's uh, quite dramatic to manipulate a stock. Uh, it's somewhat illegal to manipulate a stock as well. Uh, but the truth is that anybody who trades aggressively is going to move the price. Don Chorus is a piece that started with very different motivations. It started with looking at the technology itself, which is Microsoft HoloLens, and trying to conceive of the most fantastical, poetic project that I could make. The technology is an augmented reality headset which means that you see the space that you're in entirely, it's glass, and inside you can have animations that react to surfaces. So I decided to create a musical piece. 
There's a physical player piano in the space, and there are also speakers that can spatialize sound. And the animations are of birds and watercolor effects that land on the piano and trigger it to play. And when the birds fly around, the sound also follows their flight. This piece was partly inspired by the Electromagnetic Dawn Chorus, which is waves that get picked up that sound like birds. And these technological birds are like an automaton playing the piano, and the sounds of the soundscape are a mix of flute sounds, real bird sounds, electromagnetic dawn chorus sounds that are all uh, distorted together to, be to become a mix. The musical composition of the piano is also a mix of an algorithmic composition, which is taking fragments of compositions made in whole tone scales, and the other set of phrases I worked on with a composer, a human composer, his name is David Francois Moreau, uh, and we created another set of phrases. So it's a mix of algorithm, human, soundscape, and the choreography of what the birds are actually doing. This piece has then furthered an interest in structural color. Birds create structural color in their wings, very blue birds are not creating color with absorption, they're creating color with refraction. And that's how you get the iridescence. The HoloLens is also creating color with structural color. Uh, it's three panes of glass that represent the red, green, and blue channels that a projector is triggering because it knows where your eye is. So structural color in the HoloLens, structural color in birds, and linking it all to music to create a hopefully synesthetic, poetic experience. Recently, Bitcoin was migrated to Ethereum from its old chain. And I have another sprawling piece in order to bridge the two, and that is Cloud of Petals. I expanded my focus on value to think about data. We live in a world in which the narrative was about companies that harvest our data in order to feed desire back to us. So I decided to make my own big data of rose petals, of you know roses as symbols of love, at the same time roses as a very big business. I placed this performance, this very ritualistic uh, data harvesting of these men photographing 100,000 rose petals, this digital sublime, the hyper object of big data. From this data set, we used AI to generate new images of rose petals for the cloud of petals to turn these petals into pixels. Meanwhile, I had the men choose one petal per rose that they considered most beautiful. And these petals were pressed to be a physical subset of the larger data set to be a relic, an artifact of the entire performance. And to bring my practice all together, these press petals are now backing the current Bitcoins that are on Ethereum, which means that any Bitcoin can come and redeem and get a physical petal. And this is one of the things that I want to move NFTs in the direction of, that NFTs, they're not ownership really per se, they are a way of linking to the creator that's simply pointing towards an image or towards any sort of other asset. And my hope is that NFTs can separate stewardship of artworks that are difficult to store, are difficult to engage with from their financial value. This is a giant proof of work to ensure that Bitcoin, which online just looks like a little video that twirls, is actually linked to a project of enormous value with thousands of hours spent on creating a film and virtual reality scenes and sculptures and photographs.